Thank you to the Solana Foundation for hosting this. Um, the main thrust of this presentation is really um, my frustration with you. Uh, that is the main, well, that's really what I'm trying to get through to you is actually my frustration with developers in the space. I know the whole point of these hacker houses and Solana Breakpoint in general is to try and empower builders to be the best that they can be and do whatever they want. My job, however, is in, uh, well, maybe telling you off a little bit every now and then. I don't want to hold anyone back. However, there does need to be an adult in the room sooner or later who tells you when uh, you're screwing up every now and again. And I've decided that that's my job. Because I'm not a gigabrain like the developers in the space. I'm sure most of you are much smarter than me. But what I am very good at is recognizing my own limitations. And this is something that developers, I found, uh, struggle with very much. Um, yeah, just to uh, start us off, uh, what actually inspired this presentation in general. I spoke to a VC, would have been a few months ago. It was at another very nice bougie conference in Paris this time. And he had backed a project. Uh, it was a relatively small group of guys, but you know, he'd written them a check. They were running a DeFi protocol. And um, anyway, they got breached. The protocol got hacked. And the very young founder of this protocol, who had taken the VC's money, they'd started it, they were running TVL, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. After the breach had taken place, this young man decided that the rational thing to do was to take his own life. Now, it's very easy to be deceived by the very bright colors that we have here, the clubby music, the free booze. It's all very nice. We have all these parties that I'm sure plenty of us have gone to. Um, and it's a very nice atmosphere here. But what I really want to drive home to you today is that this is a very serious industry with very serious consequences, and you need to take it seriously. Thankfully, for this uh, young man in general, who had a girlfriend, family, uh, and a, the VC indeed, who, who cared about him very much, he was not successful in the suicide attempt, and um, he just created a massive hospital bill. That was it. But it was when I heard about this, it really did drive home to me just how some developers, you know, you think you're a gigabrain, you think you can do anything, you think that uh, bad things won't happen to you because you're so smart, and uh, bad things do happen, and as a result, you completely lose your frame of reference. So if there's anything that you're going to take away here, I'm not really here to shill a bag. I'm not really even here to shill our services. I'm mostly trying to tell you to keep yourself grounded in reality and not let yourself um, make mistakes when you could avoid them. Anyway, when are you going to get serious about security? This was originally, actually, just when are you going to get serious? But the foundation thought that it was maybe slightly too abrasive if I just told you when are you going to get serious. But this is the crux of what I'm, uh, I'm trying to ask you. When are you going to get serious? Because despite the maturity of the space, despite the maturity of the Web3 ecosystem, people still keep making the same mistakes. And you can see this all over the place from on a, from a Web3 perspective when it comes to smart contract breaches, but also when it comes to really regular things as well, which users might do, uh, where things don't really seem to have progressed. Probably the most extreme example I have of this is meeting two people who lost a fortune on Mt. Gox 10 years ago and then lost a fortune again on FTX. So these people are very smart in both occasions in that they saw the promise of the technology and yet did not learn their lesson whatsoever after losing out on being a billionaire once upon a time. And, they, and then, you know, kept everything on an exchange and uh, then got absolutely wrecked as a result. You know, people don't learn the same lessons. Uh, where in industry, other industries, you do see that people do learn lessons from their own mistakes. Here, we seem almost, you know, a bit juvenile, a bit emotionally stunted, etc. Anyway an honest examination of Web3 security standards, if such a thing exists. Right. Yeah, so um, I think this, this slide, it may actually be somewhat irrelevant. I am trying to appeal to your broader sense of care for the space. 
which a lot of you don't have. I mean, let's be honest, most of you are pirates, mercenaries, you just want to make a lot of money, then you know, take your Tinder date somewhere presentable and retire to the Bahamas or whatever. You don't really care about the broader ecosystem that much. However, in this kind of ecosystem, it is somewhat positive sum. So the more good projects there are, the better it is for everybody. And uh, the more errors there are, the worse it is for everybody. Just to expand on what I'm saying here, the uh, image on the right here is actually the front cover of a magazine called Judge in the late 1880s. So this is where electricity was just becoming a thing. And uh, public perception was actually pretty negative for electricity back in the day, if you'll believe it. Uh, the public viewed electricity as dangerous, unnecessary, and mysterious. Um, so unnecessary being key here. Why on earth do we need to lay all of these cables carrying very dangerous current all the way through the city just so that we can replace candles. What is the point? Why is this helping anybody? Look at the amount of cost that goes into it. Look at the amount of benefit that comes out of it. And as a result, people were looking at the danger and you know, people were getting tasered by these you know, very rudimentary electricity cables back in the day and popular opinion turned against it. And I see a very big, um, very similar corollary with crypto in general, or decentralized blockchain technologies, whatever you want to call it. Every time that there is a serious security breach in the world of Web3, it actually does everybody a disservice, because there are so many crypto Luddites out there, there's so many people who think that what we're doing is unnecessary and dangerous, that every time there is a serious failure, and it can be for a small project, it can be for a big project. This damages the prospects for adoption for all of us. And if we do want Solana, for example, to be successful, we need to avoid this in aggregate. You can help this by actually you know, making sure your security is up to scratch. And uh, as a result, we will actually get less arguments from crypto Luddites who say, oh, look, just last week, look how many millions of dollars were lost. In, uh, in the Web3 industry. So here we are, it's a bear market, and more than $1 billion, I think it's $1.3 billion, have been lost this, so far this year. The year's not even over yet, uh, due to hacks of various varieties. And this is at a period where I think it's slightly above $3.4 billion in VC funding has gone into the space. You know, this does not look very good. Why are we not learning from our mistakes? Why is, this, uh, why is this happening so much? Now, of course, during the bull market, more money was being lost due to hacks. Uh, however, in this state, we're meant to be a bit more mature. We are meant to be learning every year, right? We are meant to be getting better, and yet in some cases, things are not getting better. And that's why I have to stand here in front of you and tell you why aren't you taking this seriously. Yeah, Web3 security, I think it's a bit like uh, Disneyland with the uh, castle facade, where, you know, it looks like a castle, um, but I'm not sure it would do very well against an armed assault, which is, of course, what a castle is originally intended to do. So in a lot of ways, you'll, find, you'll see a lot of people being verbose, very verbose sorry, and speaking uh, with great detail on what their security standards are. Uh, you see for you know, certain blockchains even have their own security, in-house security teams. You'll have certain uh, Web3 projects, the very big ones, will have their own security personnel working on them. Uh, interestingly, I was speaking to a project uh, just last weekend where they had actually been breached very severely. And as a result, when they were relaunching, they had actually hired uh, someone who was chief of security there, which is very pleasant to see, but you don't really see it all of the time. I, uh, I did title this uh, an honest examination of standards in Web3. Uh, that was rather optimistic for me. I mean, what even are the security standards here? I've been in this industry for about half a year now from a, a previous, uh, you know, previous job inside of Web3 and then before that in TradFi. I'd always found cybersecurity very interesting. So coming to it with uh, a certain knowledge of Web2 cybersecurity and then bringing it to Web3, it was quite interesting the kind of discoveries you make where uh, there aren't actually any standards yet. How many years has this industry existed? We still are struggling to develop standards and certainly struggling to implement them. So, Get an audit from a security firm once you've raised capital, maybe. And who are you going to get this audit from? Well, probably whoever's cheapest, because then we can say, we've been audited. That'll help with our marketing. 
Um, or indeed, we are trying to get listed. As a result, we must get an audit from a specific auditing firm. We have no idea how good they are, but we need that so that we can get listed. People aren't really taking the actual thrust of the matter, the original idea, which is that your protocol should be secure very seriously, uh, which I think is uh, a bit of a shame, and at the end of the day, is very responsible on the part of your users. This will hopefully change, but um, We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Maybe Breakpoint next year, I'll be telling you how much of a good job you've done. Obviously, the entire, um, the entire structural alignment with auditing firms and exchanges in itself can be uh, somewhat, um, somewhat inefficient when it comes to uh, why people are getting audits in the first place. So it is good to see structural demand for audits when exchanges demand that uh, listing uh, token listings are audited before they, uh, they get on. However, uh, of course, there is a you know, potential for misalignment. So these are the security standards as I can see them. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe there are other ones out there. I know there are other projects that are trying to create specific standards for Web3, but they've obviously not been very successful because here, here we are and um, you know, there, are, there aren't any agreed upon standards. Yeah, this, um, this image on the right here is actually by uh, a political cartoonist, uh, again from, the, uh, from uh, many centuries ago, William Gilray. And um, this was uh, talking about how the Napoleonic Wars were a, uh, a huge mistake for Great Britain because it cost so much money. And I felt like this was uh, kind of resembles uh, a lot of developers in the space when they're sort of wading into what it is that they are doing. So they are trying to... They're trying to create something which will empower lots of users. They are trying to change the game, shake things up. However, uh, they don't really realize you know, the actual cost of what they're doing. They don't uh, really take into account how the project can get breached. Innovation always moves faster than security. So for example, seat belts you know, wouldn't have been uh, created if there weren't cars. There wasn't really a huge demand for seat belts inside horse-drawn carriages. Kevlar vests, you know, people weren't making them before firearms existed. There's always a lag, right? You know, always, someone always needs to create a tool. Someone then needs to adapt that tool to make it a, uh, a weapon or some for, kind of destructive force. And it's only then that security gets, uh, catches up with it, as it were. So, of course, you know, security comes later. Of course, there are breaches to begin with. However, in the cases that we've seen over the last year, you know, uh, security really isn't keeping up at all. There isn't. Uh, you know, security is not progressing in line with the technology. Um, and as a result of these, these are some of the events that really frustrate me. I find very, uh, you know, really quite, they, they really anger me quite a lot, really, where it's quite irresponsible what projects are doing when they are not adapting pretty common security standards. So private key leakage taking place from Trojans, so someone be, somebody with an admin key to a project clicks on the wrong link or they you know, open the wrong email and they end up getting, losing the private key to their project. This could have been fixed very simply from the get-go using multi-sig, which is not actually something very new. Right? You, uh, there isn't much of an excuse for not applying this level of uh, security when this technology has been around ages and you're the gigabrain who's meant to be creating really cool tech. So, okay, if you're creating something very new, maybe there will be new risks that you will encounter. But you don't have an excuse for not countering the old risks. Um, another, another case, of course, uh, is the flawed assumption that un unaudited smart contracts is somehow safe, provided that they're closed source because the public doesn't see them very much. Everybody knows that this inherently isn't true, but of course, because it's more opaque, it's harder for hackers to really figure out what the loopholes are. This is, again, another, um, another flawed assumption which we are still seeing take place today. And listen, so we at Sec3, we are in the smart contract auditing business. We also have products which are for uh, automated uh, transaction monitoring and uh, risk solution, um, uh, risk uh, resolution, sorry. Um, Yet, at the same time, uh, I'm not telling you you need to buy our services, I'm telling you you simply need to take security seriously. So with private key leakage, this is something that needs to be uh, put into the protocol, the very fundamental layer, rather than something uh, that we tell you to do later on. It's relatively, uh, relatively intuitive. Um, aside from that, I've got a few minutes left. Um, aside from that, I would say to everybody, um, 
Again, I'm not a developer here. I'm not the GigaBrain like you. I'm only aware of my own limitations. So you guys need to be very aware of your limitations when you're actually building this stuff. Because while, uh, especially during a bull market, you can uh, feel very uh, proud of what you've created. You can see very immediate positive effects as a result of what you've created. In a bear market, you're meant to be a little harsher, and you're meant to be much more mature and learning lessons from the previous bull market and from the previous uh, 12 months. Obviously, things have been uh, uh, pretty rocky here. It's very nice to see some of uh, the same faces that I've seen at Solana events from a year ago. However, um, I, all I ask is that you take things seriously, uh, because it's only when people start taking things seriously that we'll see really positive change in this space. And when you are ready for that, well, we would love to speak to you. And uh, I will leave us there. But thank you all so much. And uh, I'll hopefully see you at one of the other events later this evening. Thank you very much.